Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Sir Gabs. If you are new here, just hit subscribe and click on the notification bell for future videos. In this video, we will be talking about word problems involving ellipse. First, let's try to recall some things. Definition of ellipse, PF1 plus PF2 equals 2A. Standard equation is x minus h quantity squared all over a squared plus the quantity of y minus k squared all over b squared equals 1 if the major axis is horizontal. We also have x minus h quantity squared all over b squared plus the quantity of y minus k squared all over a squared equals 1 if the major axis is vertical. So basically the difference between the two equations is the position of a squared and b squared. You should always remember anyway that a squared is the greater value compared to b squared. When a squared and b squared are equal, the ellipse becomes a circle. General equation, we have ax squared plus cy squared plus dx plus cy plus f equals 0, where a and c are both positive. It can be both negative. In such case, you may multiply the whole equation by negative 1. Solving for c, d, and the lattice rectum, c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared at all times for ellipse. We also have d equals a squared all over c for the distance from the center to any of the two direct recesses of the ellipse. We have each lattice rectum of the ellipse measures 2b squared all over a. Example number 1. Find the length of each lattice rectum of the ellipse if the length of the major axis is 12 units while the distance between foci is 6 units. First, you have to go to consider your goal, and that is to get the length of each lattice rectum. So from here, we are given 2a equals 12, because it says in the problem that the length of the major axis is 12, and remember that the major axis is equivalent to 2a. So it's 2a equals 12 in an equation. We also have 2c equals 6, because the distance between the foci is 6 units. Remember, from the center to a focus is c, so when you get the, the distance between the two foci, it, will, it should be twice of c. This time, we need to recall the, um, the formula in getting the lattice rectum. It should be 2b squared all over a, so that you will know um, the things that you need. First, we need the value of a and b. Okay? So from the given, you may extract 2a equals 12. So from 2a equals 12, just divide both sides by 2 and a equals 6. So A is already solved. This time, let's have B. So solving for B, we have to use this Pythagorean formula. I mean, this is not the Pythagorean formula that you know. This is just derived from the Pythagorean formula. It's not really the normal Pythagorean formula. So we have C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Um, in this case, guys, you may use the value of A, which is equal to 6, and uh, C, because as you know, c here is just equal to 3. So from 2c equals 6, you can just get the value of c equals 3. So you already have the values of a and c. And so when you substitute these values here, you will be able to get the value of b. So algebraically, by substituting, you will have 3 squared equals 6 squared minus 2b squared. The additive inverse, you will come up, I mean, you need to expand. 3 squared, that is 9. 6 squared is 36. And then after that, you need to... Um, do the additive inverse. So you add b squared here on the right hand side, this becomes 0, so b squared will be added also on the left. Then you subtract 9 here, you also subtract on the right, so that's why you have negative 9 here. Then you will have b squared equals 27, and taking square roots on both sides will give you b equals 3 square root of 3. Now from this values of a and b, you may now solve for the length of the lattice rectum, that is 2 times 27 all over 6. So like all I did is substitute directly to b squared. So notice you have 2 times b squared, so instead of using b, I am directly using the value of b squared. So b squared is 27, so I'll just substitute 27 to b squared here, that's why I have 2 times 27, and then the value of a which is equal to 6. Simplify further, you will get 9. 2 times 27 is 54. Divided by 6 is equal to 9. Therefore, the length of each lattice rectum of the ellipse described in the problem is 9 units. 
Example number two. Find the length of the major axis of the ellipse if it passes through point 0.23 and the foci are at negative 2,0 and 2,0. So notice that we are given a point here of which the ellipse is passing through. So this is P and this is F1 possibly or F2. I mean F1 and F2 are the other way around. It can be F2 here and then F1 is this one. So the goal is to get the value of 2A because we are to get the length of the major axis and remember it is 2A. From here, you may recall the definition of ellipse that PF1 plus PF2 is equal to 2A. So it means if we are able to get the distance from a point to F1 and a point to F2, then summing the distances will give us the value of 2A or the length of the major axis. So from here, now if you want to illustrate, if this is P2, uh, I mean 0.23, and these two numbers are 2,0 and negative 2,0, so these are the two foci of the ellipse. Okay, so this is the point of the ellipse. In short, this can be the illustration of the ellipse. You don't need to be uh, really perfect because you are just illustrating here. So if you will be able to get this distance, and this distance, you'll just add them and then you will get the value of 2a. Okay, so again, all you have to do is to get this distance. So distance PF1, point to a focus 1, and point to focus 2. So get the distances and sum them up. You will get the value of 2a, which is the length of the major axis. So solving for PF1, you only need to use the distance formula. Okay, so PF1 is the distance between 2, 3, and 2, 0. So using distance formula, you have the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 square plus the quantity of y sub 2 minus y sub 1 square. So from here, all you have to do is to substitute. So this is 2, x sub 2, minus 2, x sub 1, plus 0, y sub 2, minus 3, y sub 1. Then you will come up with square root of 9 or just simply 3. Solving for PF2, that is the distance between 2, 3 and negative 2, 0. So the same formula, okay, just substitute, you have negative 2 minus 2 squared, then 0 minus 3 squared. So summing up, you will have 25. So this is negative 4 squared and 16, and then you have 9 here. So you have 25. Square root of 25 is just 5. So you already have PF1 and PF2. This time, you can just substitute it to the definition of the ellipse. So PF1 is 3 and PF2 is 5. So 3 plus 5 equals 2A, which means 8 equals 2A. So therefore, the length of the major axis of the ellipse described in the problem is 8 units. Example number 3. The length of the vertical major axis of the ellipse is 18 units, while each lattice recto measures 8 units. If its center is at 4, negative 3, solve for its general equation okay so you have to recall that we have to use the standard equation to derive the general equation so again we are to use the standard equation to derive the general equation so in order for us to get the general equation we must take care first of the standard equation so from here you can actually see that we need the values of h a a and b Okay, so we need four values, H, K, A, and B. Then from here, H and K are already given because it is just the center. H equals four and K equals negative three. That is coming from here. Okay. Then we have to solve for A and B. Solving for A, it is given that the length of the vertical major axis, the major axis of the ellipse is 18 units. So that should be 2A equals 18. A therefore is equal to 9. Next to that, we need to solve for B, but we are not given the minor axis, instead we are given the length of the lattice rectum. So if you may recall the lattice rectum formula, that is LR equals 2B squared over A. Now, you may substitute the value of lattice rectum, so LR is equal to 8, as given in the problem, then 2B squared all over 9, which is our A. Okay? And after that, you may multiply the whole equation by 9 to get rid of the denominator. So we are trying to remove this 9 here in the denominator. 
So, from that, you will come up with 9 times 8, 72. Then 9 times this fraction, cancel 9, so you have 2B squared. Divide both sides by 2. So, to get rid of this numerical coefficient, okay, just divide both sides by 2. So, you will come up with 36 equals B squared. And taking the square root will give you the positive and negative value. I mean, positive and negative 6, which is the value of B. But remember, we are... Um, we are taking B as the distance from the center to any of the two co-vertices. So since it is distance, we will just take the positive value, which is 6. Now from here, you may substitute the values. So you will come up with X minus 4. Okay, 4 is H. Then K is negative 3, so that should be Y plus 3 because it's double negative. It's minus negative 3, so basically you will come up with plus 3. Then your B is actually 6, so you have 6 squared. And then your A is 9, so you have 9 squared. Okay, so anyway, I am using this um, equation of the ellipse because we have a vertical major axis. So A squared is the denominator of the Y variable. Now, from here, you may, um, you may expand 6 squared and 9 squared, so you will come up with 36 and 81. Then after that, you may multiply it by its LCD or the least common denominator. So how do you get the least common denominator? This has been my way of getting the least, the, the least common denominator. All you have to do is to multiply 36 and 81, then divide the product by its, um, by its greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor, as you can see, between 36 and 81, both are, are divisible by 3 and also by 9. The greatest common factor is 9. So what I do is multiply 36 times 81. Okay, so multiply these two numbers and divide it by the greatest common factor, which is 9. You will actually come up with 324. Okay, so multiply 36 times 81 divided by 9. Again, why 9? Because 9 is the GCF. So always do that when you get the, the least common denominator. So I multiply the whole equation by this number 324. I will now come up with 324 times this numerator all over 36 and also this one um, all over 81 equals 324. So the purpose of us multiplying it by its LCD is so that this can be divided. So 324 over 36 is a whole number. 324 over 81 is also a whole number. Now, 324 divided by 36 is 9, and 324 over 81 is actually 4. Now, continuing this, you will come up with 9 times x squared minus 8x plus 16. You may use special products from here. x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4 x times 2, you have negative 8 x. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. From here, you have y times y is y squared. y times 3 is 3y. Times 2, you have 6y. And then 3 times 3 is equal to 9. Then do not forget to distribute the values. I mean the, um, the multipliers. So it should be 9x squared minus 72x plus 144 plus 4y squared plus 24y plus 36 equals 324. Then it's time to arrange the terms. First the x squared value, I mean x squared term, then the y squared term, it's 4y squared. You have negative 72x, you have 24y, positive 144, you have um, positive 36, then the additive inverse of this one. So you have subtracted 324, so you also do this here. Okay, then just combine these three constant numbers. So you will have 9x squared plus 4y squared minus 72x plus 24y minus 144 plus 0. So therefore, the general equation of the ellipse described in the problem is 9x squared plus 4y squared minus 72x plus 24y minus 144 equals 0. Okay guys, that's it for um, word problems involving ellipse. Thank you for watching my videos. Goodbye.